Listen up, America. The question is no longer do you want to see America collapse? Do you want to see the end of this experiment? It is now a matter of how do you want America to end? And if you can't see the writing on the wall at this point, it's time to get your head out of the sand because we have come to the point of inevitable collapse of the great American experiment in democracy, of a constitutional republic, a institutionalization in government, of all of our desires to control and dominate and manipulate others by force that is fundamentally no different from any other modern government on the planet. Now, to see this in the greater course of human history is not to disparage in any way the significance of the American founding, of moving the ball forward from an unquestionable monarchy to a constitutional republic. Yes, it is a great leap forward for freedom in the course of human history, but as Thomas Jefferson said that a revolution was needed with every generation, we have certainly fallen short. And a revolution means change. It does not mean restoration. It does not mean going backwards and conserving old values. No, it does not mean getting back to our roots. It means progress. It means a fundamental change in how society is organized. And nothing short of a revolution is going to save us now. But let me ask you then, how is this going to happen? This now inevitable decline with politicians in Washington continuing to pretend like they represent the people with the exponential creation of money, the inflation of the monetary supply through printing, digital creation of money, the fractional reserve banking system through borrowing, through the creation of unfunded liabilities, through having children born into a world where you want them to follow your rule of law. You want them to go along with the system created by generations prior when they are born into $50,000 plus worth of, of debt of, as, as their share of the current federal debt. Very, very conservatively estimated. You roll in all those unfunded liabilities, hundreds of thousands of dollars. And a child who's never voted before is expected under this system to pay for the indiscretion of prior generations. I don't think so. It's not going down like that, people. And we see this starting at the state and local level, budget crises, cities unincorporating entirely, counties unable to pay their pensions, states where schools cannot be kept open, where basic services are failing, where infrastructure is crumbling, where for all of the federal interventions, Unemployment continues to go up. And we know from the way the federal government is able to manipulate the economy through the creation of money, through federal spending, that they're able to keep creating wealth, claims to wealth rather, out of thin air. State governments, local governments don't have that. But if if that was taken away from the federal government, if there was a monetary collapse, say, not inevitable, but certainly highly likely at this point, what we see just barely starting to happen at the state level, at the local level, is going to be happening at the federal level eventually. And it's not going to be pretty. Just imagine the monetary collapse if that were to happen in the next couple of years before cryptocurrencies are able to fully flourish and displace the dollar. Before we get to that point, do you know what kind of chaos will result? And I don't think it's anything that we can't recover from. But certainly it would be nice if we could accomplish this without a complete monetary collapse, people being left out in the dark without a functional currency to speak of. Martial law, not just something we've gotten a glimpse of after Hurricane Katrina, the Boston bombing, various other police events and around other political events in this country. Yeah. Would you rather, would you rather see that? Would you see the control of law and order established and maintained? 
by the goons of the federal government rather than your local peace officers? Is that, is that what you would want to see? The government in its death throes is the most dangerous thing, the most dangerous force on this planet right now. The greatest risk to human life is a government losing its grasp on power, starting wars because it knows that war is the health of the state. As we have already seen, even Obama incapable of giving up the temptations of being commander-in-chief during the global war on terror, continuing the sponsorship of the military-industrial complex, continuing the escalation in the raw number of troops overseas, continuing to kill children with drone strikes. The threat of violence from this government calls for immediate action. Is this a violent revolution? Yes, it already is. You may cry for peace, but the war is already upon us. You are eight times more likely to be killed by a cop than by a terrorist. Which do you think represents the greater threat to your life? The fabricated enemies of government or the government itself? Is this an armed revolution? Absolutely. I certainly choose to be armed to be capable of defending myself. That does not make it an aggressive act. Absolutely not. Far from it, being able to defend yourself is essential to maintaining peace in the face of an aggressor. And we are clearly not the aggressors in this situation. Those of us calling for this armed revolt against the American government that we are already in the midst of. Will you resist this impending death by a thousand paper cuts, by fighting slice by slice? Will you resign yourself to asking permission from government how to resist? To think that you can vote your way out of this situation? That we can lobby? That we can sign petitions? That we can defeat legislation? No, really? When you gain an inch they will praise you and tell you to your face, that's incredible, good for you. You see, the government works, the democratic process is a healthy one, and you are able to lobby and get a bill defeated, and yes, you're standing up for freedom. Wink, wink. While behind your back, they take another mile, and the government continues to grow. No, no, no. Fighting inch by inch is not how this will be accomplished. When the founders, when Thomas Jefferson called for a revolution with every generation, the implication of that is that you, you, as an individual, you, within your lifetime, will be called upon to face a radically different future. How will you face it? With courage? With open eyes? With an eye to the future? Or will you cower in denial? Will you proclaim that it is the government that is looking out for us, that it is keeping us safe, that it has your best interests at heart? Will you keep your head in the sand? But if there is anything noble left to what it means to be American, the most American thing we can possibly do at this point is fervently, passionately, with an insistence on the truth, call for a peaceful, orderly dissolution of the United States federal government. So how do you want to see America end? In denial? In avoidance? Or will you face the truth? So I ask you, America, do you want to do this the easy way or the hard way. Dude, this is like, this is really creepy. You're not like doing much for your credibility, just not answering the questions. I was assaulted by an undercover FBI agent and officers of the Metropolitan Police Department. And we've had a lot of police checkpoints here recently.